This is David Sieg with OffGridLiving.com and we are at the last formal chapter in this tutorial. I want to congratulate you on making it this far. Good job! I had a number of misgivings with this chapter. One, to fully explain this topic, I also need to explain basic carpentry, which seemed like a waste of time, since you can find all that for free over the internet. Two, everyone's roof is different. Different slope angles, different materials, different climates, so how was I to cover it all? Instead, I decided to take a different approach. I'm not going to insult your intelligence. I'm going to assume you know basic carpentry, and I'm going to assume you know your own roof. If you don't know the answers to the above questions, then just Google the question and you'll be knee-deep in answers. What I decided to do instead was give you a right way and a wrong way on how to correctly mount your solar panels. In this manner, you can see classic mistakes that people make, as well as how to correct any mistakes you might make before making them. This is the moment when do it right the first time really should be taken to heart. Your roof is an important part of your house. Untold problems are ahead if you don't mount your solar panels correctly. So let's get started. Always confirm that where you want to mount your solar panels that the solar exposure is unobstructed. Shading is a critical flaw in a lot of installations. Efficient roof placement of your solar panels minimizes pipe runs and keeps pipe runs sloping downward. Keep pipe runs less than 20 feet if possible. Any bolts used in mounting must be secured and the mount must be sealed and waterproofed. If your local water is corrosive to copper, use treatments or indirect systems. Here's a biggie. Roof penetrations must be properly flashed and sealed and the racks properly bolted. All exposed wires, sensors, and insulation should be protected against ultraviolet sunlight and weather. Insulation should be carefully applied to fit around corners, gauges, and valves. All wires exposed to the weather should be jacketed with PVC pipe or aluminum or painted or otherwise covered in plastic. Any attic wire penetrations must be secured. The insulation on the right is glued and mitered. Note that the insulation abuts the roof decking but does not penetrate it. The holes through the roof must be caulked. Seal and hide penetrations through any ceilings and walls for fire protection and to block your air leaks. In new constructions, these type of penetrations should be minimal. Make sure your wire connections are properly installed. The new plug-and-play wire systems help solve this problem and work well. The selection of your electrical materials, the lugs, the screws, the wires, etc., is critical for safe and a durable system. In the picture on the left, the indoor rated materials were used for the outdoor grounding applications on the panel itself. Test your panel frequently. Testing your panels as they are installed allows for isolating problem panels and troubleshooting the overall system. A non-functioning panel might as well be constantly facing the night sky. You need to be able to disconnect each piece of serviceable equipment in the PV system, such as arrays and inverters. In simple systems, there will be a DC disconnect between the solar panels or modules and the inverters, and an AC disconnect between the inverters and the panel. Components need to be placed in ready, readily accessible locations. Your solar panels sh should always be protected from construction activities including paint overspray. As always, if you're unsure of how something works or it's installed, you should get professional advice before continuing. So that's it. We've reached the end. I've enjoyed creating this tutorial, and I hope that you've gotten something out of it. Please take the time and rate this course. I always welcome suggestions on how to better the course as well. I wish you the best of luck in building your solar panels as well as going off the grid. 
Many of us think it's time to unplug from the current system and start creating localized solutions, not only for energy, but food and social services as well. It's time to move away from the corporate control of our food and energy systems. If you agree, come visit me at offgridliving.com and learn how to live off the grid in urban and suburban America.